<laughs> What's up, YouTube? I am losing my mind at 2 a.m. And uh, you know me. I, uh, I'm only productive when I'm about to ruin my sleep schedule. So uh, I kind of want to read some manga. And, uh, you know, I'm down to uh, not feel guilty if I make a YouTube video for you guys. All right. So, yeah, we're doing this. We're... Um, okay. So basically, today's video is going to be one you actually shouldn't miss. All right. We're, this is actually probably going to be the most helpful thing I've released in recent memory. You know, like, honestly, I haven't really been doing anything in the last five months. So. Hopefully, this makes up for a little bit of it, but if you are actually looking for uh, the habits I use in my games and how it should look like, you know, like, you know uh, 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 basically what ideal gameplay looks like. I had a game earlier today, Pistolo D2, uh, where we carried with 10 CS a minute. Pretty much, it's not perfect, but it was very, very consistently good. And that's kind of what you're looking for in solo queue. Consistently good. You can't really be perfect. Right? You're going to make mistakes no matter what. Um, so getting as close to perfect, I guess you, you want to play, uh, you want to play your best. I think that's a good way to put it. Yeah. Play your best and you want to increase the consistency of your best gameplay, um, by inserting habits. I mean, if you've ever seen a goddamn video on this channel, you know, I'm all about those habits. So we're going to watch the gameplay. We're going to stop and pause on everything that happens, good or bad. We're going to talk about how we can reproduce it how it came to be, how we can reproduce it, and or if it's bad, how can we prevent it, okay? It's actually going to be kind of a long video. I'll probably run it through the editor. Um, but yeah, let's get started. You do not want to miss this one, to be honest. Uh, I think this video is targeted towards diamond players trying to break the master barrier and or, you know, master GM players trying to increase consistency or anyone else who's lower elo than that, well, you can... Uh, see what I'm doing differently than you guys, right? And come up with your own ideas, right? Um, but yeah, let's get into it, all right? So first off, of course, we need to take a look at the load screen. We have uh, Quinn, Hecarim, Syndra, Misfortune set versus Timo, Nunu, Malzahar, Kaelin, Thresh, right? Kind of weird, but not uh, too not too far deviated from normal. I mean, Hecarim, Quinn is kind of weird. Um, and so is like Timo, Malzahar, Nunu sometimes, but whatever. Oh, Kaelin too, I guess. Maybe I'm just soft inter with this champion, but... Yeah, um, not the strangers comp. So pretty average game, to be honest, in Diamond. All right, let's fast forward. Let's go to the landing phase. Uh, Nunu doesn't have to leash, so I want to pull the wave, right? Usually speaking, um, default, my default strat is pulling the wave. If you, uh, if you, I mean, if you want to get into that higher level of things, um, we had to check every single bush to make sure they weren't uh, hiding in the bush, right? Thresh leads in case they're camping. The instant we fight, we exhaust misfortune. That's the thought. And we kite it out, you know. But uh, if we can gain control of this bush and they're leashing, we're really happy because we can pull the wave and make them lose XP, right? That's a uh, pretty normal standard operating procedure uh, at the higher ranks. You know, if you're lower than, I don't know, fucking diamond or something, you don't worry about this, right? This is just something um, to use and abuse at a higher level. Because when you pull the wave, the minions should focus, or if you do it correctly, the minions will focus down uh, your melee minion first so that if they're leashing, they will lose XP so they can't level two and you get level two. So you have control of the whip. So you're going to see what a botched leash looks like. So basically you want to gather all the minions onto you and then leave. So what happened here was we, when we, what I mean by gather the minions, right? I mean, all the range minions must look at you. This one range minion did not look at me. Okay. You can tell by that little icon above their head, um, the little little icon about the above these cute cute minions heads see this little like triple thingamabobber it means they're hitting you right so if you don't see that you didn't attract his attention this third minion didn't see us so he's not going to combine focus fire our minion here right so if you want to learn how to lead to to pull properly gather all the minions so that they will focus one minion down you see how it's spreading damage because this guy is hitting this guy and these two minions are hitting this guy yeah, uh, we fucked it up, all right? But, you know, that's that's basically how you do it. Gather other minions and then pull the wave down into the bush. And you see that they were, in fact, not leashing or they abandoned the leash immediately when they saw what we were doing. Usually, you should be on the lookout for that. If you are leashing, right, be on the lookout for the tri-bush cheese and or the bot leash. This is standard level one uh, advantages. Uh, let's fast forward a little bit because it's kind of a long game and there's a lot to cover. Anytime something happens in lane, we will pause, back it up, and talk about habits, all right? Um, but a lot of what you're going to see is literally what I talk about uh, in my coaching session. I mean, let's talk about this. Let's let's talk about this. Thresh 
wanting to to flay auto attack trade right you know how did he do it anytime they want a minion yo that's our time to go right so yeah it's literally the same thing anytime you know, if you've seen any of my coaching videos it's actually the same goddamn thing right it's just you know more precise more streamlined you know deeper habits at a higher level right um and then you know once you do this then it's like oh can set counter no he can't so we can just fucking hit her right can misfortune counter no she can't all right we're just winning so we just hit her right i missed the auto attack there unfortunately but thresh got the empowered auto attack off which is important let's fast forward to something interesting happens let's actually use the speed up function um i mean i guess if you want to talk about her okay so if we're, if we're going to look at this from a higher level perspective let's just talk about everything i guess right so we see we have a q here she wants a minion i press q same thing okay fast forward um that's the habit of every time uh one of your minions is dying can you punish with your champion and or your support can your support punish right uh okay and then this is just uh this this set is kind of running it down but since he's playing set he's kind of op right uh we just watch this real quick we can talk about this we can rewind and talk about it right uh sure 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 everyone's happy all right let's go back and talk about this uh things that we did correctly and things that we didn't do so correctly all right so let's talk about this 2v2 real quick right so uh they're hitting three on the three melee minions right on the uh what is this the fourth wave after the cannon wave uh cookie uh eu west challenge adc uh told me that you can actually label the waves as a b and c a being the first wave b being the second wave c being the cannon wave right so this is the level three is the wave four which is wave a after the cannon wave right so this is this wave so they're gonna get level three off this wave but anyways sets going in um because thresh is landing hook so if you want to learn how to trap combo off hook and thresh is in melee range so it's really weird it's not going to pull twice it's going to pull into thresh you should put the trap watch you should put the trap on top of thresh check it out so if we pause he will go on top of thresh because he's gonna the hook is gonna pull in twice into thresh so just trap here right or trap to where thresh is going right it's really weird like that but that's that's just how it be so you see how it trapped a little bit above right because i thought it was like you know a two hook pull no 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 right inside thresh right so 2v2 happens what do you guys do default is hit the closest target until you can aim adc or finish support right let's take a look we're just hitting set right and i hit misfortune with a headshot auto cancel and keep hitting set until i can kill him with q so i use q because he has no flash flash after him now this is where uh you can say mistakes happen maybe i shouldn't have insta exhausted right uh because maybe i can fight her fight my way out and then exhaust at the last second um but since she's level three i think it's highly unlikely we can use exhaust to you, you know generate an hp differential right so maybe i can hit her a few more times like that you know she hit, she let me hit her a few times because she's <laughs> she's hitting minions while she's running away actually at a higher level standpoint if you're disengaging do not stop for the minions um so misfortune stop me to hit minions i just get free hits in right so don't do that so exhaust actually for hp difference is actually very relevant because now i'm freezing the wave right so sure i pull the wave here because it's a very safe spot no one has flashes we're gonna gank the shit out of them and or if we push and thresh fucks up the lantern we're gonna have a bad time right so i actually had a game before this where uh thresh did exactly that so i'm a little uh scarred from that right so you see me every time uh every time she wants a minion i'm gonna pretend to try and hit her look at that right uh this is slightly different than actually hitting them when they want a minion because for some reason you can't actually hit them maybe there are too many minions too many range minions maybe they can retaliate with uh, a better trade right so you just pretend to do it so you just stand here and you just see what she does so i'm just standing here with headshot ready and one more auto attack i'm like oh what is she gonna do and then i'm like oh if she goes for it i'm just gonna kill her right i'm just gonna headshot into net or something like that run her down right i'm gonna pretend to do that i'm not really sure if i'm going to but i can threaten it for sure she has no idea what i'm doing right she's like holy shit this guy's headshot uh, i don't want to walk up so i'm just chilling right you can be you can tell i'm being very precise in my last hits also uh not really a higher level um habit but i would say it is a habit i learned when i got challenger not beforehand it's i press s before a minion is about to die just press s every time he was about to die i just press s and i was last hit right precisely last hit it right this is something i watched um watching korean vods when uh they were last hitting i was like holy shit how did they get every single cs and they literally were just like laning and stuff and then when a minion is about to die they literally just stopped last hit it and then continue playing the game essentially right so that's something you can do uh, a lot of times when people are clicking back and forth in lane 
and then they click on a minute to late, it's because they're busy clicking back and forth, right? So you can press S and pre hover your mouse on the minion. So if you will see here, I get like a shit ton of CS in this landing phase, right? I press S, last hit, stand still. Rinse and repeat. I walk up, pressure, press S, stand still, right? So I'm doing a lot of like, you know, <laughs> a lot of back and forth and a lot of pressing S. Look at this. Anytime my character is standing still, it's because I pressed S. And you'll notice I'm actually getting all these last hits. You'll see later that I have like 10 CS a minute, over 10 CS a minute actually, from the landing phase itself, right? I think at 10 minutes and 30 seconds, you can get 114 CS. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, we should talk about this real quick. So this is why I said we're going to slow push slash freeze because no one has flash, right? So ganks are likely to happen. You see Nunu playing bot side. Um, anytime you kill minions, you do want to look at the map. I realize I'm talking a lot, so uh, maybe we won't be cutting anything out, right? But you see how, you know, why is Thresh inting here? Can anyone explain? It's because second just E him, right? So if he gets slowed, a slow is death in this case, we would say, right? Because Thresh cannot get away and we cannot turn kill. Um, I don't think we have Ignite. Who are you supposed to kill? You're going to kill season 10 champion set or you're going to kill 4 HP Hecarim? It's not possible, right? So, uh, Thresh is kind of dying here. Not my fault. Uh, I kind of ran it down. If we were a faker, if we were a faker, and I'm, I'm not faker, right? Even though I play a lot of killing, this is fucking impossible. Um, you can say, hey, we can't trap the guy engaging, but we can trap the follow-up, right? So you can trap here. So, I mean, if you're a fucking god, and you know that, so, and then you see that Thresh is about to get stunned. You can trap here. Ekram sees that and runs straight in, and you trap here. And now he has to go around, and Thresh doesn't die. But, uh, dude, that's like fucking hard, dude, honestly. I didn't think Thresh was gonna end, so I was like, oh shit, my bad. Uh, I don't know. So, I, you see, I placed the trap super late, and one for set, which doesn't do anything, and one for Hecarim, when he already, he already did his damage, so it's not, not, not happening, right? So, yeah, um, that's actually something you can do if uh, your support is getting caught. Is think about uh, anytime your support is inting. It, can I save him by CCing the follow up? That's a good a good habit you could input here. Because if you play Kaylin, uh, that's something you can do. If you play any ADC with CC, Misfortune E, Various E, Ash W, right, anything like that, actually very effective against junglers. So if you think from a jungler's perspective, and they're running straight in with no flash, no ghost, uh, and they get slowed. What what are they gonna do, right? They need like you know. <laughs> Uh, you just walk away, right? So this guy is just hex flashing. Uh, we we're being very mindful of his hex flash from Bush with Nimbus Cloak combo. Really cancer champ, by the way. Said thank you, Rag Games, for introducing us to this champion. Here, I get pulled a little bit. I was just trying to tease him, you know, trying to see if I can uh, get them to stay because I see Nunu's bot side, right? We did just see Hecarim is here, so this could be grief. But at the same time, if you successfully pull this wave, again, same concept of pulling the wave down in this bottom bush. You pull the wave this way. And you freeze here they're really upset with a really bad base and thresh is here so they can't break the freeze because you know even if hecarim's here we have thresh full hp and i have full hp and nunu is full hp versus hecarim full hp and these two no hp right they can't break the freeze so if you can successfully pull which is what i'm trying to do here you'll be very happy here right so you can see here as long as you can pull the range minions you're good to go right they're not quite pull the range minions so it's gonna have to be a slow push or a fast push depending on if they base or not if they don't base, we're definitely not basing. We have the HP advantage, right? But they are definitely basing, so I'm just going to push, right? I'm just like, hey, can I can I debate this guy, right? So here, you see Thresh is coming in. You really have to make sure this Hecarim is in 3 million IQ and waiting here, right? Um, so yeah, cue the bush or something, or uh, hope he's not like Challenger or something. But yeah, he could be 3 million IQ waiting here. Um, but here, if you take a look at what your jungler is doing, Nunu is not coming. It's just Thresh, right? Unless you're literally looking at Nunu and he's literally coming, he's not coming. See? Snowballing, snowballing the other direction. Anytime something's happening, I one habit you can do is glance at the map. See if anyone's if anyone in team is actually coming. No one's actually coming. So you know it's just 2v2. Or 2v3. Hecarim could be here, right? I'm like, okay, he's trying to fuck with us. No, I guess they take Lantern. I don't know. Uh, they're just trolling, right? Uh, I can potion here, right? I use a potion here to make sure we get the push off in case Hecarim's coming, right? We need to make sure we push the next wave. Because, you know, anytime you push and you want to crash into tower, you need to make sure it gets into tower. You push this wave, it's not getting into tower, right? Because the next wave is coming in, right? So you need to be able to push the next wave or just concede. Be like, oh, I fucked it up. So you see Hecarim topside. You can, I think you can argue that we should have slow pushed this and then push the next wave, right? Slight mistake. Well, maybe not slight mistake, but I would say, I would say it's a, 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 a pseudo mistake depending on how good Thresh is. Like if Hecarim's here, we can lantern out, that kind of stuff, right? But uh, yeah, we push this in. Then we're definitely going home. Definitely a BF buy, a pink buy. Since I have inspiration boots, I don't need to buy boots. You can actually take a play here since we have a lot of time. Um, we see that Hecarim 
was mid, right? And some crazy shit happened. I don't know what the fuck is going on, but I can take a play here and go home, right? Versus face immediately in order to set up dragon. But uh, I think we're just going to be greedy and take the plate, right? Our team is like fucking dead or something. So we're just going to take the plate, right? And they're going to have first prio on the dragon. They're going to have, uh, I don't know if there's a phrase to describe it. Uh, also, another mistake here. This is because I'm playing in D2, but um, don't make bad habits like this. Uh, sorry, uh, I, I, I don't know if there's a phrase for it, but first to dragon or something, first to the objective, right? Priority, I, I don't know if there's a phrase. Someone let me know in the chat if, there, if people uh, in pro or whatever use a phrase for this, but whoever gets the setup on the objective, maybe like tempo, I guess. I don't know, tempo on the dragon, you could say. Um, they're going to have tempo on the dragon because we're basing and they will be here. They're going to clear the wave. Their support can go where the dragon, yada, yada, yada. Um, they're going to be there first, essentially. Also, the second thing I want to point out is when you base, you really do not want to get stopped. And you must assume everything is warded and or she will check with her E, with her abilities, right? Because if you get stopped, you're so fucked, dude. You definitely lose dragon and you lose a wave or you have to stay without a buy, right? And that's just so bad, all right? So when in doubt, run all the way to your pink or you literally have to be in a spot where you cannot be stopped. Anytime you want to base... You have to one one uh, higher elo habit. I would say don't even worry about this in lower elo. This starts ha this starts becoming a problem. I would say in like uh, D one master GM that kind of stuff. Challenger, you get punished for this. You fucking like lose lane for no reason, right? Um, yeah. Anytime you base, default is base where you know you are not seen and they can't guess where they, you are, essentially, right? Or base in you know the non default is base in a stupid spot with your team ready to counter gank, right? Um, but that doesn't happen as often. So yeah, this is grief. She can just E the wave. She can just E this and or it could be warded. This is super bad, honestly, by me. Uh, don't do that shit. So yeah, here uh, we base. We can buy pink ward. I buy call, whatever. Uh, I've been buying call a lot recently so I can accelerate my two item spike, which I think is really important on Kaylin. Like, I don't really care about the one item spike as much. I just want like three items as fast as possible. So I buy call a lot. I'm not sure if that's correct, to be honest, but I am getting away with it when I take inspiration. For sure. I don't have to spend money on boots. Um, so yeah, we come back to lane. Anytime you, anytime a new wave approaches, this is one of the habits we talked about, we can look at the map and say what's going on. Okay, new new top side, they got the dragon, right? Don't worry about it. That's fine. Can we check the dragon? No. No flash, no way to check. I don't know. Good luck Thresh if he wants to face check, right? There's no way. Um, so yeah, anytime wave comes in, we must uh, look at the map to see what are we supposed to do. So obviously we're supposed to slow push this because if you fast push this and they freeze at their tower, you can't break it because your new news topside and Hecarim could just be waiting anywhere. So you just kind of lose lane for no reason. Then you have to like force to run into the river blind or something. I don't know. You're basically AFK doing grump or something, right? So you would only do that, like push uh, with the risk of being frozen on if they have Giga Roam support and you need to force him to uh, make a move, like show a bot or show up somewhere else, right? Yeah, um, that would probably be an exception. Could be wrong about that. Someone uh, fact check me on that. Uh, but that's that's probably one of the one of the ways I would uh, get them to freeze on me on purpose, right? Uh, but yeah, slow push. When in doubt, you just slow push. And you see me doing the press S habit to, right? So we see Quinta, we see Hecarim here. We're like, okay, Hecarim's just chilling here. Uh, oh, I remember this is really funny. Yeah, he <laughs> Thresh has no flash. He's just fucking dead. <laughs> Yo, uh, not my fault. Uh, he dies. But here's the thing about bot lane: if your support dies. But you are still able to get the CS and XP. It's actually not that bad. Like, actually, right? It's only a disaster when the carry dies. Because your scaling is super doomed. Like, he dies and they don't dive me. This is fine. Like, if they, they, they can't dive me, that's totally fine. Don't be mad about your support dying and stuff. What you should be mad about is if you die in lane to super grief, then you just, you just lose the game by yourself, essentially, right? But if this happens, it's totally fine, right? We can totally pick up all the farm with 10 CS a minute. Who cares about the dragon? We lost the dragon. Whatever, man. That's fine, right? Um, just make sure you're getting all the CS. Easy, right? And you'll see I have like 10 CS a minute here. Press S, last hit. Easy money, right? So here, you know, they could do a repeat. Hecarim has no ulti. Noon is going top side. There's his face checking. He's griefing again, but that's, you know, it's okay. Yeah, don't don't check the dragon. Okay, okay. This is a diamond mistake in lower. They, you know they're on the dragon. Someone on your team isn't there. So you know it's a 3v4. What do you do? Go see the dragon for some reason. They just want to see the dragon for some reason. Don't do that. Don't do that. You're going to get forced on. They're going to 4v3 you. They're going to flash on you, use ulti. How do you, uh, why do you need to see the dragon? If you see the dragon, it's not like it's going to change anything, right? That's, that's like a, that's like a, it's not like a pet peeve, but that's like a common trap. 
what are you gonna do watch them do the dragon it's super stupid right you need to be able to do something with that vision if you go like say for example we need to actually check to see if they're doing dragon not doing like a sneaky base and run top thing right that would be like pro level shit i don't even yeah that's like some pro level shit in solo queue i've literally never seen that fake dragon right um so yeah you, we do not need to get vision on the dragon you just you just know it's gone right don't risk inting again uh he steps on a trap just Kaylin, uh, Kaylin stuff. If you put a trap here and there's a pink here, there's a common, common run in spot into the bush. They will always step on the trap. The second spot is this way, and if they know you've done this in the past, they will try and path this way, right? So, in order of common one, two, and three in terms of bushes, bush traps, right? To defend your pink word here, right? So we got an easy uh, HP differential uh, thanks to that trap. Very nice. Thresh is fishing for a free hook, even though Hecarim's here. That's fine. We can try and bait our Hecarim hook, right? Remember, you play like Hecarim's here. We have Flash, so we will be fine soon. But we're just slow pushing, right? Oh, cancel my auto tech there. That was sad. But here, you see I'm very being very cautious, right? Remember, we don't know where Hecarim is, right? They need to make sure we're not inting here somehow. I, I commit two traps in there, right? Oh, okay. He's, see that threat? Yo, see that Thresh? Yo, don't, don't do that. Don't do that. Never. You can't 4v5, dude. Don't, don't 4v5. It's actually a disaster. If he dies there, then I definitely lose the next wave because I'm getting dove, right? Uh, and mid's missing as well. So yeah, do <laughs> don't 4v5 randomly, right? Unless you have a very good reason to. Um, so yeah, uh, that's really, 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 really strange. It is. We see, we see Hecarim, then we go for a fight. You see that? You see how fast that is? Anytime we want to last it a mini, we got to look at the map, right? So another one is also... Uh, let's say we're like fishing for like last hits or like punish anytime it's it's basically like uh what you can do is like can i quick last hit or can i quick punish if the answer is yes or no let's on the map fast that's a new how that's a habit you can do too that's a, a higher level one i would say right so yeah cs yes. oh and we took rift herald so that tells me to look at the map anytime i see something like this you can look at the map anytime you want to hit minions you want to look at the map same thing right we see hacker on top side i'm like okay Mid is probably not here. We can do this. There's no way mid doesn't go to the Rift Herald, right? Um, if we're wrong, then fuck, we're screwed. But uh, we can we can safely guess that mid is going to Rift Herald, right? Highly highly unlikely he's coming bot. Uh, and then, so we go for this. We just go for the quick EQ punish. We don't actually need to kill him, but hey, if Set wants to run it down, that's fine. Uh, we just exhaust him his fortune, right? That's, that's, that's pretty standard because, you know, she's going to ulti. And then you can try and run her down, but she has flash. Don't forget sums. Don't forget sums, right? Remember, you need to keep track of, even though there's chaos going on, the fighting should be default. Hit this hook. Okay, I just EQ. We're just trying to poke. We're not actually just trying to kill him. I'm just, I just, no, just want to put damage into him, right? The fact that he dies is not planned, right? I'm just playing the fight as accurately as I can, right? Exhaust the main damage dealer. Hit the closest guy. Use abilities if we think we can kill, right? Uh, and disengage when all things look really bad, right? So it's literally literally the same thing. Exhaust is actually kind of insane, huh? Look at that. Exhaust actually saved Thresh. It's kind of funny. And I just face take misfortune ulti. After that, you have to make sure... Oh, shit. Did I hear, hear a heal sound? Or here, you can check here on the status bar. Did they use heal? They used heal. Did she use flash? Uh, nope. Did set use flash? Nope. So they got flashes. Or you can check sets hex flash. So you know she's going to flash. That's how you know you shouldn't do... And I was considering a net flash ulti play. It was about, not possible. Not possible. Right. So will continue. Uh, we just saw all that shit happen top side. Unless Syndra has TP, we can just push and run. Right. This is probably a Storm Razor buy. We can talk about itemization after, I guess, we enter the shop. Um, but yeah. Uh, we saw that uh, Quinn is dead. So she's not coming by yet. So we got to push fast. Push and go home. Right. Ah, yes. Use the chat to your advantage. You say, use chat to make your team happy. And they will, you know, play better. Like, I don't know how, I don't know what to say. Like, this Thresh, he was not doing so hard earlier. As long as you're not flaming in chat and stuff, and you're, you know, using words of encouragement, even if you're, like, a bad person inside, you know, he will play, dude, he will play better, dude. He, he found the free hook, right? Uh, so these guys, the teammates you have, aren't bad. They make mistakes. And then when you shit on them for those mistakes, that makes them bad, right? Think about it that way, all right? They're not bad until you make them bad, right? Actual facts, actual facts. I've seen a Blitz go like 0 and 20, have the worst game of his life, and he saves the game with one hook and we win the game. Like, I, that story has happened so many times that, like, you can't convince me otherwise, right? So, yeah, uh, we got to go home here. We saw Cinder's min, but uh, obviously we can't uh, go for more, right? Uh, that would be kind of griefing. We need to go buy. We have a strong buy and there's no punish. They can't push in the wave in time, right? So, buy your Storm Razor. 
Uh, in terms of itemization, Stormraiser, I think, would help Thresh land his hook. One, it would help prevent Seth from running us down. Two, it would help prevent uh, Hecarim from running us down. Is three. So we have that's the reason why we bought Stormraiser, not Infinity Edge. Infinity Edge would be like, on a hook, I can try and one shot with random headshot crit, but I don't think that is, um, I don't think that's winning. I think it's, <laughs> I think your my Thresh is not landing hook in the first place, right? So we need to use Stormraiser to help him. Um, so go, we're back to farming. You'll notice I have uh, 100 CS at 10 minutes, almost at the exact same time. That was pretty cute. Set was mid, maybe we should ping missing. That's, I guess, my bad, right? I was busy buying. Uh, usually supports the job, but, you know, in solo queue, everything is your job, right? Anytime you're, anytime they have a roam timer, what we mean by roam timer is uh, they have priority. They have time to go do something until you get that priority back. So we based, they got priority, sets roaming, back ping your mid, right? That's called roam timer. So you can make a habit for that. Every time you base, you can double check. Uh, this is one habit I actually have not implemented yet. Uh, so every time you base, well, obviously, because I, did, I didn't ping my millionaire, but every time you base, you say, they are getting priority right now, back ping your whole team. Or back ping anyone, anywhere second roam to. So for example, if your jungle was on the wolves, back ping your jungler. He's getting Hecarim invaded with set jungle, set support, right? Um, so we see Hecarim top and uh, Sekio is mid. So what are our choices here? Can we, we, we just push bot essentially, right? It's too, it's too far to go mid. By the time we get mid, uh, we're not going to get to the cannon in time, right? So the best course of action is just stay bot, right? Push this out, hit the tower, right? Something like that. Push this out and maybe look mid if Malzar has TP with ulti. Otherwise, we just we just push bot. We're, we're just happy farming this, right? Almost missed a minion there, Monka S. Um, for Caitlyn, like Q farming tips, uh, use Q to kill a minion, a melee minion, right? And set up the... Uh, uh, use Q first. So you have Q again as soon as possible, but also make sure your Q doesn't screw up your minions. I don't know, just a small Kaelin, small Kaelin tip. Uh, not really useful. Uh, he's trying to camp a bush here, right? But I think Set knows is really obvious because we had priority, right? And Syndra's missing, so this is this is becoming really monkey ass. I don't know if she's going top or bot. We have no clue, right? So just push this and be really safe, right? The only war uh, early warning sign we have is the pink word. So Set can do some kind of flash stun play and keep us trapped, right? Um, so you see where your Thresh is playing, even if. He stay, you say he can stand back and lantern you if Syndra comes. He, if he's literally not doing it, you cannot do that play. It's physically impossible, right? So I'm like, oh shit, we gotta go wear this, right? So I'm like, trapping close to myself, right? I slightly grief uh, in case Syndra's here, but I don't think I'm getting one shot and they're too far away to help. So I think this is okay. Uh, I'm trapping myself just in case Hecarim is here, right? I don't know where Hecarim was. If you lose track, assume he's here. So we want to clear the ward. Usually default, um, default idea, if you're not sure what the enemy team is, you say... I want to clear the word who's missing, right? Sindra Hecarim. Is this griefing? Probably. All right, this is kind of bad. But I tried myself for some counterplay, and I saw TP mid immediately. So I was just like, okay, I guess we can get it now. Not, not the most illegal thing uh, that's happened this game, let me tell you. So Hecarim's still missing. Hecarim's top. Okay, we can push. Ready to see how that works? Literally looking at the map. Don't look at this screen. Don't look at this screen. Don't look at this screen. This, this, this. Let me show you. This. This, this, this is, this is trash, right? This is where the game is played, the mini map. You literally cannot play what's on the screen unless you know what's going on the map. Actually, actual facts. The higher elo you go, the more important this is, right? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, let's keep going. We're hitting the tower because we see everyone, right? Uh, no one can stop us. We can go for some punish here. Oh, I went for some spicy ideas. We can talk about this. This is something I've been practicing recently. If, uh, so we know that landing EQ... If you run at them, landing EQ is literally impossible. Like, they're just going to dodge it. Even if they're bronze, they're going to dodge it, right? Actually. So how do you trick them into landing EQ? Well, I, you can think about it as a trade. What does that mean? I will tank one tower shot to land EQ. If I tank a tower shot, what do you think is going to happen? They're either going to flash on me, with the support is going to flash engage, which is a highly doubt because he's not going to expect me to tank a tower shot. He's like, wait, what? And then the ADC, they're going to be like, holy shit, he's taking a tower shot. I'm going to hit him, right? Tank one tower shot, then it's your time to EQ, right? You see Misfortune immediately pathed at me. His reaction time was so late, I missed the net. Really sad, but um, that's the idea, right? I took two tower shots. It's not good. You're in a net out of tower range. But you see how the trade idea works, right? If you're looking to trade, which you will win trades if you land EQ, or if you're looking for the four man because their top is their jungle is top, right? Then you can trade like that. Take one tower shot to land EQ. The really insane thing that I came up with. I did not see someone do this. I came up with this because I saw myself do it on accident, right? So yeah, um, proud of myself for that one. I'm gonna use that one more. 
Um, be afraid if you see me in game. Oh shit, I got fucked there. I didn't. I was not paying attention to her Q. She got me good there. Um, but a shirt. We traded that. We traded so that it's hard for them to defend. So we're just pushing. So then you say, anytime you want to, anytime you do this objective, what's the next step? Right. Next step is get the next wave in base. Oh, I remember what happens here. You can escort Rift Tower into the next tower if you really want to. Um, here, anytime a new wave comes in, we must check the map. Since you're still mid, wow, would you look at that? What happened top? Top is missing. So what do you think Quinn is? <laughs> where do you think Quinn is going? Quinn is coming, and it's a three v four because Nunu is gonna defend mid, right? So, what do you think about a three v four, guys? Yeah, I mean, uh, not chat. Oh shit, YouTube chat, chat. What do you think about? What do you think about three v four, right? Three v four. Oh, creepy. Unless you one shot someone. So, what do you think is gonna happen here? 3v4 is griefing unless you one-shot someone. So let's take a look. We're escorting the Rift Tyrone. Let's get the fuck out now, guys. Hello? Uh, oh, is that a one-shot? Wow, Season 10 Champion is not one-shot. You lose, right? So, yeah. It was... It, oh, actually, it was, I guess, a one-shot, but we still, we still lose. <laughs> we still lose, right? And maybe I shouldn't have died. Maybe if I played this uh, not as inti, we could have uh, survived this, right? Uh, but, you know, I have not seen Hecarim in uh, a while, and he just pressed E on me, so I guess I died. Right. My bad, I guess. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> we definitely died here. But then our whole team is definitely dying. Like, okay, we one-shot someone. Then they one-shot me. Now it's just a 3v2 with our team dying. Right? Obviously, it's just doomed. Right? Quinn's here. So, yeah. Do not take a 3v4. Do not take a 4v5. It's actually fucking griefing. If you take a 4v5, it better not involve you. Unless you, for some reason, you, the ADC, can somehow one-shot someone at whatever point in the game you're at. Like... As an ADC, we can't one-shot people this early in the game. Like, pretty much never. It's not never, but it's very rare. Right? So, leave that up to your teammates. So, if they can't do it, we, we're getting the fuck out. Right? That's one really important concept, I think, that's going to be a recurring pattern in any ELO. Is if you are playing ADC and you are 4v5ing, you will have no control over the 4v5. It's 100% grief. Right? It's all, I, pro I think it's always grief, honestly, in Season 10. Like, it's just 4v5 against an ADC is always grief. Go do something better with your time, right? So we inted. Feels bad. We actually went bot here because, uh, you know, I think Mauser is going to go mid after he spawns, right? So we want to fix the lane assignments now. You can also uh, opt co to consider top, but obviously Ocean Dragon's on, so we're just not going to give up Ocean Dragon for nothing. Ocean for tower is definitely not worth. Uh, I don't even know if we could get that. I don't even know if we could get the tower. I don't know what the fuck is going on mid, but Mazda is running at them with no ulti. So I'm, I remember him inting, right? Uh, not my fault. Not my problem. I don't really care. We obviously don't go to the fight, right? Because it's why you know man disadvantage. So do something better with your time. Push this and look for one v one of misfortune, maybe, right? Uh, after you push this, then we can go help because something crazy is going on, right? I'm like, yeah, I don't know what the fuck is going on. Still, it's still a three v four, right? It's still a 3v4 until you see Misfortune. Then maybe you can come. Then it's a 3v3, right? Oh, can you help with 3v3? I mean, I guess, right? So here we're doing Gromp until proven otherwise. So I'm just doing the fucking Gromp, dude. And I don't want any I don't want any of what they're selling. This Nunu and Thresh, dude, I don't do I don't give a shit, dude. I how do I even walk there with Syndrome missing, right? I don't care, dude. I'm making money until it's proven otherwise. Right? So here I'm like going against my better judgment and being like, wait, if, if I face check Syndra, it's a bad time, right? And in fact, we face check Syndra here, right? Uh, the only saving grace is exhaust. Now, how do we know we're going to face check Syndra 30 seconds in advance? Wow, they're fighting near the mid tower and the only person missing is Syndra, right? So what's going to happen if you go help? Syndra's going to wait for you. That's literally your, what your thought process should be. How do you beat Syndra waiting for you? And I couldn't, so I just doing, I'm just doing the goddamn ground, right? So that's the idea. And then I fucked it up, but uh, thankfully we're running an OP summoner. So uh, instead of Syndra one-shotting us, I press exhaust, right? Ala Mao. Uh, here's a tip if you play Syndra or mid lane or whatever, and you see ADC running exhaust, stay outside of exhaust range. You can combo outside of exhaust range and they're fucked, right? But uh, I don't think that's really easy to do. It's very natural for you to move in for the kill, right? But that's just an anti-exhaust tip. That's right, so how exhaust is ass. They're question pinging me. I'm like, fuck you. I'm going to kill this bitch. Uh, take the lantern, style points, Hecarim kills me, whatever, man. I killed the millionaire, we're happy, right? Overall, not bad, right? Um, not bad, not bad, not bad. I got some, I got some uh, scaling, we killed mid lane, we're happy. And then all this is good because uh, Misfortune's not here, so we just get this free kill. And we got the dragon off it, pretty good, right? If they dive to kill you and it wasn't free and you got money off it, that's not necessarily a bad thing, right? It's not like 
Dying is always bad. Timo thought he had more damage than he did. Uh, Electric Q is probably down or something. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, let's fast forward. We spawn. Where do we go? Go bot, right? Default to a lane where we can make money. Can I go top? I don't know. <laughs> but I was already on the way bot, right? I don't know what's going on with Timo. So, oh, I'm going bot, right? Um, so yeah, we just farm this. And anytime you can, you can do like the uh, foresight habit, what's going on next. You can kill. Or every time you kill a wave, you say what's going to happen next. So I get the next wave. Yes. Ideally, get it into the inner tower no matter what. Uh, if you're going to die, you can't do it. Okay. But if you can get it into the inner tower, you must. That's the maximum CS possible is pushing the wave all the way in. So you see this? I need to collect the next wave fast. Oh, fuck, Syndra's coming, dude. Oh, I kill as fast as I can. Right? Ah, uh, fuck it. I can't get the range of mans. I'm out. Right? Because you know Syndra's going to cut you off. So you get as many as you can. And if you look at our CS per minute, wow, look at that. We're 148 at 150. Okay? Or, sorry, 148 at 15 minutes. That's what you guys are looking for, right? Um, a lot of people focus on the CS per minute part, but that's not really the problem you guys are having. You guys aren't getting CS because you're busy going to try and 4v5 24-7. You're helping every fight you see. In fact, you should not help every fight you see. I want you to think half the fights in solo queue are giga grief by your team. And half the fights in solo queue are giga grief by the enemy team. So how can you spot the difference within half a second, right? Uh, yeah, let's, we rotate mid, right? Because uh, we, can't, we can't match Syndra. So I'm like, hey, Malzara, go fuck with Syndra, right? So I typed in chat, me match MF, right? Um, so here, I'm just going to jack his wave because uh, I'm the carry here, right? Uh, <laughs> uh, you go bot bitch, right? Uh, and then we can look to rotate top after with our prowl. Or we can look to control the herald, which is the next objective. Uh, I didn't get the red, that's fine. Team all getting red is fine. Default pink ward. And then if you don't know what to do because your team's getting pushed in, you just wait, right? Or you can find advantage yourself, but we can't find advantage yourself against Misfortune because I have no flash. Right? It seems very unlikely besides using ulti. And it's like, oh, they're trying to get the queen. Maybe we can look. Oh, and then uh, surprise, we got engaged on. Uh, so we got giga outplayed here. We can talk about this. This is actually really insane. So this is a, this is a, uh, think about their engage thing. Think about their engage anytime uh, you're in the mid lane. Honestly, this is super wild. Like, I wasn't even trying to farm minions, and they just fucking giga engaged on us from like 3,000 range, right? This is like a Hecarim thing. So next time you see Hecarim, know that he can do this in the mid game, right? This is a champion specific thing. This is not normal, honestly. This shit is not normal. If this is any other jungler, he can't. He can't do this, right? Uh, if it's Rek'Sai, maybe he can like, I don't know. Do, do, do he definitely can't do this? Okay, so this is a Hecarim specific thing. So what's your solution? Stay under tower, right? So it's a don't don't die to that. That was really int. That was really bad by us, right? Because the whole game is collapsing now. Um, yeah, fast forward. We have a lot of CS. We can still carry this, right? Your win condition is being able to kill their front line. When you play ADC, it's basically at, when, at the point where you can kill the front line, you can carry the game. You see this? This is a fucking last whisper at a minimum. So Storm Razor rapid into uh, IE and or last whisper. I think IE third into last whisper. More reminder. Uh, into, uh, you know, could be QSS, could be Stopwatch, could be GA, could be Bloodthirster, anything like that, right? So that's the build path, right? You're definitely looking for a Last Whisper if the instant he buys an armor item. Because if you cannot kill Frontline, you can't play the game, honestly, right? So here, we're pushing, making sure we can't get ganked. Anytime you push, you want to make sure you can't get ganked. Fast forward, fast forward, fast forward. Uh, okay, here we go. See, so remember... <laughs> How do we win fights? Well, Kaylin needs to be able to kill someone. So, can I kill anyone? Can I kill the frontline? No. Anytime this Hecarim wants to fuck with us, yo, hell no, dude. We do not want to fight. There's no need to fight, right? Especially if this dude is just giga tanky. So, it's like, yo, uh, yeah, spam back ping, dude. I do not want this at all, right? I am not having any of this. We're going to go collect mid, right? Don't uh, do some stupid shit like trying to fight, right? That's the, if there's a key takeaway here, it's anytime a fight breaks out, your first instinct is go help. Your second instinct is numbers and can I actually do anything, right? And if you cannot have, okay, if you cannot do anything because of numbers or abilities or health bar or otherwise, find something productive to do, like farming. Uh, so yeah, here we can't push mid because uh, we're getting engaged on by Quinn. You know, top top has no prowl, right? So Quinn could be here. Ekron could be here. Same thing he just did to us. So we just have to AFK for a little bit, right? And counter what they're doing. So let's say they die Malzahar, we counter, right? Let's say they push mid, we catch mid, right? Uh, we're not really forced to do anything until they start Baron, essentially. So, uh, okay, here we go. They're diving Malzahar, we came to counter. You see how that works? 
they're like, except that Hecarim dived really fucking fast, and Mazahar is really, really far out. So we came to counter as soon as possible. I don't know what Nunu is doing, but he's going to go kill Syndra, I guess, right? They came to counter. Literally, the instant something happened, we know we can come here because why? This is our CS equal to mid, you know, when the waves are coming in, and we can defend the tower at the same time, right? So let's take a look at this. So here is just some um, fighting. He pulled Misfortune, but it's a 2v3, so we got to play it giga conservative. Look at where I'm standing, right? Instant he E's me, I exhaust him, and then he just dies while exhausted. Of course you lose, right? Uh, so here you just you just play the fight out mechanically, just play default stuff really. I honestly there's not much to talk about there. Um just trap yourself, kite it out, exhaust the guy who's doing damage, and you win, right? Um oh yeah, Thresh is like my back as he took the kill when I was sniping the misfortune. Beautiful cue by me. And uh, it's okay, right? Who cares if he takes a kill, right? I'm happy we're winning the game. And even if you are mad, telling him you're mad is just gonna make him play worse. You your teammates are not bad. Did you see that one in five Thresh pull that off? It's you typing in chat that makes them bad. Okay. Like uh, if you're one of those people who types in chat, you're actively shooting yourself in the foot every time you play the game or every time you, you press enter. Not even joking. You lose like an extra 30% of your games. Not, I, I just made that shit up, but that's how, that's what I feel. When I'm flaming in chat, that's exactly how I feel. Or when someone, not, not when I'm flaming in chat, I don't really flame in chat. When someone on the team is flaming someone else in chat, that's how it feels. Right? Yeah, look at this play. He's like the lantern. He's got the hook. He got the flay. He got everything, right? Oh, I want to watch his Q again. Check this out. Oh, look at that. Look at, oh, look at that Q. I don't even know how I hit that, but I'm insane, right? Anyways, your reward for not inting is more waves, right? Basically, your reward for playing good is more money. And your reward for having more money is killing people. And your reward for killing people is objectives and winning the game. So you're going to see these three, these three fold ideas put together. Okay, now, when we talk about helping stuff, right? Here, I want the crap, right? Because that's money. Or we can push bot again. But uh, they're spawning, so it looks really monka s, right? Or we can base to set up dragon. When you see a fight happening, you say, can I come? How do you know if you can come or not? Numbers. Do we have numbers here? They have 8 seconds on the misfortune from here. 5 seconds, 4 seconds, 3 seconds, Hecarim, whatever. So, if we all show up, it's fine. It's going to be a 4v3. No problem, right? And if, if this keeps happening, we just kite it out. Right? So I saw that Quinn is speeding past Timo. And they're coming from base. So we need to get the fuck out. Or kill someone immediately. So if they're not getting, yo, you need to get the fuck out right now. Right? So thank God they disengaged. Right? Because you see, oh, wow, Quinn is coming, guys. Right? So yeah. Uh, yeah, we need to get disengaged. All five were coming. It was actually not, uh, what's it called? 4v3. Right? Because it was actually 4v5. Right? Because uh, they're literally all coming. Like even here, like even in review, I'm like thinking it's a 4v3. Nah, it's actually just 4v5 always, right? So here we have to wait for Teemo or we give up the dragon. Of course, you give up the dragon, right? Does it look like you can fight for the dragon right now? So one uh, dragon or baron tip is the later the game goes on, the faster the enemy can, team can do dragon. So the closer to the objective spawn, the nearer you need to be the objective. So let's say it's, uh, uh, let's say it's like everyone has six items and Elder just spawned. You need to be on top of the Elder to stop them, essentially, because they just instantly do the Elder. Right? So in this case, they do the dragon really fast. If we are not set up by the time they touch the dragon, this is not contestable. Right? Unless for some reason you think you can kill everyone when they're trying to get when they're trying to exit. Right? Or they're 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 really weak, so you can, you can kill them all, something like that. So yeah, this is super grief. So what do you do when it's super grief? Go farm. Right? So you see this? Oh wow, they're all bot. I can just collect mid and go top, right? Which is exactly what I do. Right? So fast forward. Uh this is super, super troll. I don't know what's going on here. But uh, if I do go, it's a 5v5, except for the fact that it's a really grief 5v5. It did not start well. And we can't kill Hecarim, right? So push, right? We need to go and make money. You will not win the game until someone can kill Hecarim. It's facts. I should go top here. Oh, thank God. I was like, what am I doing? Go top here, right? You like literally cannot win the game until someone can kill Hecarim, right? There's, there's no let's 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 not kid ourselves here. There's no backdoor play here. There's no stealing like Elder Dragon. That's not that's not that's not likely. You need you need to make the money to kill the Hecarim or you're gonna lose the game, right? So here we just collect the top farm. Ideally, you want to get the wave into tower, but we can't because we're gonna get ganked, right? So you just base, right? That's fine. Uh, base. We come fight the fight the red. Oh my god. Okay. If they want to fight red, I'm down because Mazar is coming. He's a five v five, and I'm closer to being able to kill Hecarim. Right? A lot closer all of a sudden. In fact, I think we can actually kill Hecarim now. At the point where we can actually kill Hecarim if we kite everything out. Right? So we're all showing up to the fight. 
Uh, it's a 5v5. If nothing happens, we just go on our merry way and go push our waves out. Go collect our waves. Um, we think something's happening here. You can just 5v5. Okay. Now, oops, holy shit. Let's go back to uh, where we were. Wow, where we where, where, where we left off. We're like halfway through the game. Okay. Now, we finally got a 5v5. I want to see spoilers. Shit, I fucked up. Oh shit, I fucked up. Okay, okay, okay. There's spoilers, there's spoilers. Am I trolling? I'm trolling. Okay, that's what. Now, we finally get to 5v5 in the mid late game. This is the first time we're using team fight habits beyond 4v5 decision making. Is this 4v5 or not? Right? Team fight habits. This is a 5v5. Now, when you're when when you say this is an acceptable fight, I am down to fight. That's when the next set of habits kicks in, right? So once you can make sure you're not 4v5ing, so you can collect as much money as possible. If you notice my income is very good despite the fact that I died three times, right? Let's fast forward. Now we can actually fight. Let me tell you some of the habits uh, I've been using, right? So one is anytime you want to hit someone, where is the rest of the team? You must spot the rest of the team before you can play the game, right? Anytime a, th anytime a team fight breaks out, it's not a focus on pressing your, your buttons, hopefully, unless you're like, dude, if you're focused on pressing your buttons, you're like, you don't know your champion or you're like silver, okay? So you must make sure that you know what your champion does without thinking. Right? Like, I should be able to trap myself without having to think about it. Right? Trap myself for a Hecarim engage or a set some crazy shit, right? So, anytime fight breaks out, we're not thinking about our mechanics. We're thinking about where's the rest of the goddamn team? Because if Hecarim comes flying around like this and you instantly lose the fight off that, you didn't get to play the game. Right? So, you take a look at this. We saw Set, we saw Misfortune, we saw Hecarim on the left, we saw Quinn on the left. Boom! That's everyone. So, they cannot be on this side of the map. Right? Unless the Quinn has TP. She doesn't have TP. Right? So we know that all coming from this side. So when we approach, it is we know that our right and bottom are completely clear. Where we can we can approach pretty safely. Just don't get ultied from fog of war. Right? So take this really slow. Really slow. Look where I'm standing and where I'm clicking. Right? I'm playing on the I'm, I'm playing on the edge here. Why am I playing on the edge here? If I walk through Syndra, right? Or Hecarim, right? So you just play Giga Cautious. Right? So I'm like, oh, you want to hit that Hecarim? Too bad, boy. This Syndra is just waiting for you. So I'm like, oh, okay. Take the Lantern, Teemo. Teemo is just caught in a bad spot, right? He didn't come with the team. So if you want to talk about, like, positioning for Teemo, he's, uh, he ran the wrong way. He needs to run towards the team, right? Or he needs to take the Lantern, either one. But uh, he fucked it up. So I don't, know, I don't know what he's doing, honestly. He, like, literally didn't see the Lantern. That's not, that's not our problem, right? So he's like, okay. Sometimes unlucky, right? Now, next step is if 5v5 went wrong, what do we do? Stop the Baron. Can we stop the Baron? Yes, we have Malzahar and Kaelin up. We just defend our carries. And the Baron will sandwich them between... We can sandwich them between us and the Baron. So they weren't taking Baron. I quickly collect top, right? And then I can come back when some crazy shit happens, right? So you see this? Oh, Quinn's here. Maybe I need to trap myself because she's going to force engage on me, right? You just make sure you don't die to Quinn here. Sure, 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 sure. You can ping, like, help if uh, you need to. Wow, look at that damage it do to her. Wow. Like, 50 damage. It was bad. Okay, we're farming the we're farming top because Mazahar wanted mid. If they do Baron, we're gonna check. We just saw her do Krugs, and so we know she's kind of here. Yo, this guy, okay, my Thresh trolled here for sure. I'm like, yo, I need I need your lantern me out, dude. I need your lantern me out here when Quinn comes, right? But I'm like, fuck it, I can do this by myself. So I quickly did it by myself with exhaust ready. That's why exhaust, that's the beauty of exhaust. Sometimes you can just do it by yourself. Yeah. Uh I don't know what Thresh is honestly, I have no idea what Thresh is trying to do there. Like, was he trying to check the Baron or something? Like, he was not trying to check the bear in something, right? Look at where he's moving. Yeah, he should have helped me uh, clear the wave first. So here, we see a fight, right? Can we come help? Yes, it's 5v5 or 4v4, depending on Teemo. Totally fine. We just kite it out. Don't let them fight us. Keep farming. Keep stalling. Everyone's happy, right? Fast forward. The carrying, look, like, the carrying, carrying as an ADC early mid-game is making money. That's what I want you to think. You have no business fighting. Because you're fucking, you're the weakest person in the game. Actually, the weakest role in the game. Early game, right? Early mid game. So, we are folk, you're, you carrying is making money. And then in the late games, which we, I'll show you, then you can carry with your champion, right? So, here, Malzahar went bot for some reason and went to get blue. So, I'm going to clear mid and go top, right? Classic. He checks Baron on the way, which is nice. He didn't die, thank God, right? So, we clear top. We base because uh, we think they're not going to do Baron. Um, 
Oh, hold up. Something happened here, so I canceled my base. Oh, yeah. Looked like uh, I wanted the Infinity Edge Andor to come help the Mazahar, right? We know we can come help because 5v4. Literal maths. Like, instantly look at the map, check dead people, check teammate positioning. Enemy position, they're all there. So it's, all that really matters is you check your teammate positioning, right? Um, yeah, this is 5v4. Let's go. This is winning. Let's fucking go, guys. 100% winning. Someone, someone go, please. Let's, they're getting debated so hard, right? Fucking run it down for this fight, guys. Let's go, baby. So you can see here, we're trying to giga debate them, right? Because we know unless someone gets one shot, it's 5v4 is giga winning, right? Any 5v4 is giga winning. And I'll show you just how giga winning it is, right? So we're playing Kashi's here because, you know, Hegram's on the left, right? Got stunned by Syndra. Exhaust baited a second time. And I run from the Hecarim because I thought he was coming from the left, but he just uh, retreated back to his team. So, what do you think? 5v4 winning or what? Easiest fucking win of my life, right? And then uh, we base so we can buy Infinity Edge and Pink Ward and go get mid prowl so we can ward Baron again, right? And I don't know what the fuck is going on here, but uh, I base, so I'm going to push mid and or come to this because it's also another 5v4, right? Because <laughs> if Syndra died. So I'm like, fucking go, dude, fucking go. So basically, mid game is literally who has numbers. Team without numbers is trolling or genius, right? Uh, so yeah, this literally look. This Hecarim was like twenty kills or something, and it didn't matter. It's, numbers is king. Syndra teleports onto a ward, uh, instantly one shot, right? <laughs> Misfortune walks up, instantly one shot, right? <laughs> so these guys are just grief <laughs> griefing to try and save their teammates, I guess. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck? So we get the dragon because they four v five, right? Easy money. Uh, continue. We uh, got the mid wave, right? Got the mid wave, get the red with the Baron. Same old, same old. We actually both pink. Your your word, here's a, here's a small wording tip. As ADC, when you word, your word wants, must be the safest word. You want to spend the least amount of money on words. Support's word is the most aggressive one. So safe is uh, defensive in nature. So like if they push in, it'll be very beneficial for your team. Or is it staging ground for you guys to attack into the middle ground area or on the objective? Because that's never going to be moved. Right. So I put mine there. Dutch puts his data too, but it's whatever he's going to move his. Um, I don't care. Fast forward, uh, Mazar is mid, so I'm like, oh shit, can I collect bot before they start the Baron? And I think, yes, I can do this before they can do the Baron. Right? I do not think they can do the Baron with their team comp. So I am going to collect this first before going. And I want Mazahar to cover bot. You see this? I want Mazar to cover bot because he has TP. Right? I don't think he ends up moving, but um, yeah. That's the idea. The guy with TP goes by usually, uh, unless there are some extenuating circumstances, right? Uh, something's happening here is a 5v5, take it. We can take a 5v5, play normally, right? When you see a 5v5, remember it's, see champion, where's the rest of the champions, right? It's 5v5, so I check Mazar is coming, 5v5. I just ulti without thinking, because it's default winning on a, on a carry, I would say, without sustain. And then Hecarim and Set are missing, so we just chill, right? I'm just looking for Hecarim. Oh, found Hecarim. Try myself. Better try myself. Nice. Good shit. And I netted him in the face. And I trap combo with Mazahar. Easy. Look, when you can kill the front line, you can win the game. You can carry the game. If you cannot kill the front line, FF. Because you fucked up. You already fucked the game over, essentially. All right? Um, so yeah, we were just, we're just we can fuck this guy too, I guess. Right? Just flash in and headshot him. That's just knowing your champion. We just know we can kill him with headshot because we have uh, hella crit and headshot already. And then sets the support, right? He can't kill us, right? He just run his ass down too. And did you check for the last guy? It was a misfortune. We're fine. I have stopwatch, right? Easy. Uh, so we just kill this guy. No problem. And I'm like, I can actually dive misfortune because I have stopwatch. So I'm looking for the headshot angle. But she's, I don't, I don't know. She's actually playing safe, dude. I don't, I don't know, dude. I don't, I don't know how I didn't kill this guy. Look at this. He's like so close to getting headshot there. Oh, and I want to net forward too, dude. I'm like, okay, I can net forward here. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not happening. And then anytime you want to make these plays, oh my God, I did it again. Anytime you want to make these plays, you must check death timers, right? Because this is a classic, oh my god, I want to like try and kill people after the fight is over. And they're spawning with TP, all right? Don't, don't let that shit happen to you, all right? We saw Syndra TP like three minutes ago, so it's still down. But you know what I mean. We saw, and Quinn is missing from bot, so she's coming immediately. So you must prepare for that. You can't hit the tower, because why is hitting tower illegal? 1v2. Can you win 1v2? No. 4v5 is illegal. 4v5 is illegal. 4v5 is illegal. I don't know how many times I'm going to have to say it, but look at my score here and tell me, if Quinn shows up, how do I win 1v2? I don't know if I can clue. I literally, they literally have to step on it, like I have to trap Miss Fortune and hope she steps on it and trap myself and hope Quinn's ease onto it instead of using Q for whatever reason. 
and as a net land land net on Quinn, right? I don't even know if if one of those crits fail, she doesn't die. Even if they both crit, I don't know if I kill her. And I'm just gonna lose stopwatch, and I'm not ulti to finish. Like it's impossible. If you cannot calculate victory in a four v five, you cannot win. And what I mean by calculate is our one shot is Malzahar ulti onto a trap into we instantly out with lantern. That's calculated. They cannot stop that. Insta kill four v five is victory, right? That's calculated. This is like. I think I'm kind of strong because I'm 9 and 3 with 3 items and a stopwatch. I should be fine here. And then you just like fucking try and RNG a way out. That's not going to work, right? Unless you're like on fire in like, the, the, I don't know. Unless you're, you know, you're like intuition tells you. Uh, it's usually a grief, honestly, right? You have to be like in the zone and something, something like special has to tell you, you, you know, this is winning. Your subconscious has to tell you this is winning somehow, right? Uh, here we can just push another wave. Honestly, we needed a base for Baron, honestly, right? Or collect top. Either one would be uh, probably better because Mazahar is gonna come mid after blue. So a kind of a, a mistake by me, honestly, right? Uh, but we definitely base for sure. Uh, we were late to this Baron. That was really bad, honestly. I should have based. Uh, oh, actually, wait. It was actually pretty good. Wait, I'm a genius. Uh, basically, in this stage of the game, if your base does not change from farming extra stuff, you just need a base immediately. What I mean by that is, let's say I'm gonna base and buy a BF sword. And I, I farm another camp, and I'm still gonna base and buy a BF sword, nothing changes. You should have just based instead first, and then come back to farm the camps, right? So in this case, I got the extra wave, and I'm like, oh, I just griefed. And then I saw my Dorans, and I'm like, wait a minute, I'm a genius, because I insta-bought the Mortal Reminder, right? Could not have done it without collecting the wave. So I'm like, oh, uh, accidental, accidental, happy accident. <laughs> So now we can definitely kill frontline. Now you can carry the game. Congratulations! You've reached a stage of the game where if you die once, you lose the game, right? Now, if you're a fucking faker, you can't lose. I think. Maybe. Sometimes. Right? If you don't die and you kill people, you win, right? Isn't that how it works? So we have reached the promised land, the Neverland, the, the fucking late game of an ADC who hasn't fed his ass off and has income to kill the frontline. Congratulations! You can start playing the game, right? So here, now, the first priority is to not int away your hard-earned 30 minutes. I'm not even joking. If you die here, you just wasted 30 minutes of your, your game, essentially. And you didn't even get to practice your late game, right? You threw all that farming shit away. I mean, I guess you got better at, like, making money and stuff and not inting 4v5, but, you know, you didn't actually get to carry the game. Now, you actually have to carry the game, right? Before carrying the game was not dying and making money, now carrying the game is actually carrying the game, right? So let's take a look. Let's take a look at how we carry the game here. So here, first step is don't fucking die and get prowl mid, right? Don't fucking die. If you die, the game is over. That's what I want you to think. A late game throw is the biggest disaster ever. So, okay. Let's take a look at this. We take, we take these fights super cautiously. And this is why the team fight habit of if it's even numbers, we must, uh, what's it called? Uh, have giga awareness to make sure we're not getting flanked. Because when you die, you just lose the game, right? So... Take a look. We're catching mid. I see some shit is going on. And I am not farming the minions. I'm stacking my headshot. So when I arrive, I have my strongest possible hit. I'm not farming the minions. I'm stacking headshot here, right? The so headshot set. I actually didn't crit. Feels bad. But you see, we killed him in two hits. How do we kill him in two hits? Wow. I mean, you know what the answer is, right? I have five fucking items. Of course, I kill him in two hits. I've been playing. I have not grief as hard as everyone else in this game. So I am rewarded with my giga amounts of income. Right? So as we're killing the set, don't look at the set, right? You need to still find out where the Hecarim and the Syndra are. You need to make sure the Syndra is not flashing onto you, right? I saw her ulti, so I know we're good, right? We saw Misfortune with ulti, we know we're good, right? We saw Syndra stun. Okay, now we can go crazy here. We could have tried for a net forward play, but like I said, don't grief the game away, right? I'm not sure if the net forward play works. Okay, don't, don't fucking do it, right? Also, it was not, I also thought Kuna was coming to uh, flank us, but he didn't. So, all right, you lost in him, that's fine, right? Sometimes unavoidable. It was a team, team macro. So, hurt, fast forward. We push mid. Then, uh, looking to gain uh, control over Baron and or the dragon, depending on uh, how many dragons we have, right? Up, oh, two dragons. So, dragon's really important. Here, we're farming and waiting for our team to show up first. There are ideas of you in the late game going first as an ADC to set up. Well, I still wouldn't recommend it because everything one-shots you, right? I would probably play it safe. Um, it's a little passive, but it's in line with early mid-game, right? 
early mid game if you go first it's inting usually right as adc so very similar uh but now that you can one shot people with a trap maybe you can go set up first but i would i would not recommend it um fastest way to lose the game you see that that's the fa that's the fastest fucking way to lose the game honestly maybe yeah maybe you know watching this never go first fuck it just don't go first you don't need to go first to win games <laughs> you don't need to go first you need your team to face tank for you right but here we're just making sure we can catch mid pro unless something better happens that's something better happens 5v5 take it we're looking at the left we're looking at the right we see Sindra. we see hecarim we're happy we just hit the close guy don't sit in the misfortune ulti that's really grief right you can look for the Sindra kill if you really want to right uh, and then we see the hecarim easy dodge how do we dodge the hecarim multi remember it's all about team fight awareness. I'm not thinking about how to trap people or kill people or whatever. I'm just thinking, what is Hecarim doing? Can Syndra ulti me? I stopwatch. Can Misfortune do something? No, I don't think so. Can Quinn do something? No. All right, so that's what we're thinking. All right, we're looking at these other champions. This guy, clean miss. Because I'm already walking back by the time he ultis, right? And then once you've outplayed everyone because you have eyes on the back of your head, then you can push them out, chase, and or start the objective because you outtraded them, right? So here we're like looking to chase people down so that maybe we can get the Baron, right? Oh my god, I, I nef- Dude, Misfortune Moose is insane even though it got nerfed. I nef for for the headshot, uh, not the headshot, the rapid fire proc on her, but I couldn't even get it. Um, oh, check this out. What happens when you lose? Dude, what happens when you do this incorrectly, right? Here I was possessed by Bloodlust and I saw I could kill the Hecarim. That has been fucking me all game right because i'm like oh i have items that i can kill him and i know where misfortune is i just saw her i can exhaust her stopwatch and exhaust i'm good to go what do you guys think what's gonna happen next i can i just pause and let you guys think about it for a few seconds right because we saw quinn die off screen to malzahar they traded kills ignite or something right space aids uh who do you think is missing who do you think is missing if you guessed syndra you'd be correct what do you think syndra's gonna do this is why when it comes to the late game if you agree on adc oh wow wow you died in like literally zero seconds uh, unfortunately it couldn't even you didn't have time to react with stopwatch right so yeah that's why awareness is so important okay awareness in team fights is so important the instant you make a single mistake a single misstep a single distraction you 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 you, you can consider that lost the game if they take the baron here is your fault right essentially Hey, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this, look at this. I, uh, for half a second, I played the team fights well, and then I forgot about Syndra, and she literally deleted me without ulti. QE. Wow, that's very fair. Very fair. But that's how the game works, right? So as an ADC, you need to not let that shit happen to you. So you set the Baron here, right? Because I died. And then Hecarim died. Thank God my team killed Hecarim while I was griefing. Um, I think he died to Ignite or some shit with, like, Nunu damage. But anyways, they're starting the, they're starting the Baron. They're starting the Baron. All right, so... How do you know who wins? Uh, we talked about uh, this in a coaching session earlier today. Uh, I don't know if anyone was watching, but you can do the objective based off numbers and the objective being Tower Dragon Baron. Numbers and a number of carries alive. Okay? Can you essentially catch the carries when you're doing the Baron? Otherwise, you cannot turn. Right? So numbers tells us, no, they do not have numbers. It's 4v4 at best, 4v5 at worst. I'm running with home guards. Secondly, how do they kill the carries? Timo Malzahar. They literally cannot kill the carries, right? So, auto default win. Also, we're going to smite steal the uh, Baron. So, default win, right? Look at that. They're just fucking griefing. Easy money. Um, and they lost a bunch of health. So, we're just going to bully them away from the, the Baron here. This is still 4v4. I'm down to take this, right? 4v4, find the Hecarim, stop watching Zulti, whatever. Come up with a plan. And look, if nothing's happening, your team's not walking into the river, that's fine, right? You still need to make more money. You're still not at six items, right? Go make more money. Play path mid here, right? When in doubt, make money, stay safe, right? Uh, Quinn's looking to get caught, so this sounds good to me. Oh, I see a Hecarim, right? This is fine. This, just let's, let's go, boys. This seems good to me. Honestly, flashing was probably a little ambitious there, but I would consider flashing there with a headshot, one shot Quinn, right? Uh, oh, this guy's dude, that's illegal. That's fucking illegal, dude. You can't hit my word. That's illegal. That's what I thought. Holy shit. I saw that a second time today, and I'm like, what the fuck? Uh, Okay, so Timo's leaving, so it's the 3v4. Run the fuck away. You see how that works? Literally the same thing. Uh, okay, Timo's coming back with us. 4v4. 4v5, really. Mazar is in base, right? Still, run the fuck away. This, this rule does not change. 4v5 rule does not change unless you can literally one-shot someone. They step on a trap. That's Kaylin, right? So here, this is a 4v5. Right? We can take it really slow, right? Uh, so there, you see how I was hitting the Hecarim? What I was doing in-game and in the replay, I'm hitting this Hecarim 
but I'm looking at the map. I'm wrecking. I'm do. I'm wrecking this guy. Sure, but I'm looking at set. I'm looking at Syndra, and I'm wondering where the misfortune ulti is coming from. Right. We take it really slow. We don't have to kill this guy. Right. I'm looking for Quinn too. Quinn's coming from behind, by the way. If you didn't notice. Right. So they're all top side. Misfortune is somewhere missing, probably near the Baron side. Quinn's behind us. Just look at Quinn real quick. You see that? See how fast we noticed that? It's because we're literally watching her with the eyes on the back of our head. So we push her away. Gain mid prowl. Otherwise, Quinn is going to back the shit out of you guys. And then you can start the Baron. And remember, it's the same thing. The consideration for an objective is numbers and carries. How many carries do they have? Quinn and Misfortune. And what are the numbers? 5v3. With our carries being Mazar, Timo, Kaelin. Can we do the Baron? Yes. I'd say, how can they, how can Quinn and Misfortune stop us? Misfortune ulti. So Timo can zone, Mazar can zone. And Quinn, same thing. Mazar, Mazar can just zone the shit out of them. I can zone the shit out of them. See, Quinn give up. So it's like, oh, now we don't even have to think about it anymore. We just do it, right? We bit insta base, right? If you can, you can try and collect up. Oh, oh, Misfortune is trolling. Lol. <laughs> nice 1v4, right? Um, so yeah, she just dies. I don't know what she was doing. But here I can collect mid because now only Quinn can come with set. So I'm like, I can just push this. Quinn tries to fuck with me. I just kill her ass, right? Because I, like a good AC, have been farming all game. So she can't touch me, right? That's forward. As a carry role, this is like the main thing to master. Carrying is making money. And once you have the money, is literally carrying with the money, okay? There's two parts to this. Um, all these habits are basically designed to make you, help you make money or help you not int with the money, right? So here, uh, this guy's actually dying. This is basically a 5v4 because they have no uh, they have no millionaire now, right? So let's just fight the first thing we see, essentially. And keep watching. So I see Syndra. I'm like, okay, maybe she can TP back in. We have some time. Oh my god, quit, quit. Illegal! 5v4, go! Right? See how that works? Fucking illegal! Right? So we just go for her, right? She can't one-shot me. Sit down, bitch, right? She gets run She gets run down. What are you doing, Quinn? She tries to flash out. Whatever, dude. I'm just going to chase you anyways. She dies, right? I don't know what she's doing, but that's illegal. It's literally 4v5. Oh, start dragon. What do you think? Is that legal or illegal? Fucking illegal. 4v5. It's the same thing. Guys, this elo and every elo is the same pattern. I promise you. If you can recognize, train yourself to recognize the pattern within... Like, the, the less time, the better. Literally, it takes you 10 seconds, to, 10 seconds the first time you see it. Five seconds after you do it for, like, two weeks. And then half a second after you do it for years. That's how you know what to do within half a second. 5v4, Quinn dead. How many carries are alive, right? Easy money. It's just Misfortune and Syndra. So I just one-shot everyone, right? See so this? We're looking at Hecarim. Set, Misfortune on the bottom right. Syndra on the left. So we can just take it slow, hit the closest guy until we can figure out a plan, Right? I'm like, oh, you kind of want to get the, you kind of want to chase a Syndra because like, she's, she's dead in one hit. If you cannot figure it out immediately, it's not a play. It's not a legal play, right? So just go back to killing the set, whatever, right? See this misfortune? Oh, net forward. That's a legal play. I saw it immediately. Syndra, flash forward. New, legal play. I can do it immediately. Now you might be wondering, why didn't I wait for ulti here? I could have waited for ulti here, right? Uh, it's because I thought she had hourglass. So I just went for the flash, right? And I was like, Oh, I was like, huh, I pressed tab, and I was like, oh, why am I her hourglass? I was going to trap it. And I was like, what? She has no hourglass. I saw her use stopwatch earlier in the game, so I was like, oh, she might be, she's building hourglass. But she wasn't building hourglass, so you could chunk it up to a mistake. I, could, I shouldn't use my ulti there. Wasting flesh is really bad, right? But uh, whatever. We got bigger fish to fry. Obviously, I have bigger problems than that, because I died at Hecarim earlier, inting, and uh, I died at Cinder earlier, inting. So, yeah, uh, once you kill them all, you check death timers and say, again, the objective is the nexus. How many carries are alive? Numbers and carries, right? Quinn is the carry in 15 seconds. Okay, can we dive her? Yes, game's over. That's it. How many carries can defend the Nexus? And it's not Syndra, it's not Misfortune, and Hecarim's not a carry anymore. You know, no, none of them are spawning. It's just Quinn. We can dive her by herself. We can end the game. So if it was a 1v1 situation, I would go for the end, right? Because we can win 1v1 at the Nexus, right? So anytime you see an objective, numbers and carries. Anytime you see a team fight, it's numbers, right? And use this, uh, what's it called? This habit. To make sure you can maximize your amount of money in the mid game and use this habit in in the mid late game to make sure you know if you should you know again make money or not or if you can contest objectives based on how many carries alive despite being down numbers or in a 5v5 situation or a numbers even situation make sure you're not getting flanked right and paying attention to everything in the team fight so uh i probably won't be cutting anything because i think i talked pretty much the whole time holy shit, it was an hour long but I hope it was very informative. Um, maybe we'll do more games, more videos like this. Because uh, I think 
uh, you guys probably learned a lot from this, I hope. Uh, for my contemporaries out there, my ELO or above or slightly below, whatever. I hope this was helpful for you guys too. Um, I think the big thing for us to recognize is seeing what patterns are most frequent in this meta, I guess you could say. So like, for example, Rome Kingdom. People complain about Rome Kingdom. That just means you need Rome Kingdom habits. Like, holy shit, where's the mid laner? Your mid laner doesn't have priority. That matters more now than it did five years ago, right? So we must make habits to adjust for uh, how games are going in our day and age, right? So yeah, uh, let me know if you guys thought this is useful. Uh, uh, what am I joking? Of course it's useful. And uh, let me know how it helps you guys. Holy shit, I'm actually griefer on this account. Uh, yeah, uh, hopefully it was informative in this uh, Diving to ELO. Um, I would have an example from my Challenger games, or I guess you could say GM games or whatever, but uh, I'm not going to lie, all these games uh, are either Giga Int or 20 minutes long, 15 minutes long. Like, yeah, a lot of these are like, look, look, look. A lot of these are over, a lot of these are over by like 15 minutes, so it's really worthless games. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything on main, but when we do have 1v9 carry on lower rated account, uh, hopefully so useful in Diamond 2. Challenger, it'll be very same ideas, just higher execution, higher level, even higher level ideas than that, honestly. Um, we're like What I just described to you in this one hour long video is basic. That's, that's, the, that's basic. All foundation, nothing, nothing fancy, literally all foundation. And you saw my foundations weren't even good. I made many mistakes in this game, right? And it's still a hard carry, quote unquote, in this ELO. So imagine if I made no mistakes, and uh, maybe in my in challenge ELO, that'd be like really high win rate, right? Yeah. Um, practice, 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 practice. Making uh, any of these habits you thought were useful into your own, and uh, yeah, remember. Uh, I don't really talk about. I didn't really talk about this during the whole hour, but remember that the habit forming process is inserting a new habit into your already standard gameplay. So your standard gameplay being the trigger, right? So remember when we were like, oh, anytime a fight is breaking out, you know, the trigger is a fight is breaking out. So you think I want to hit this guy. Then the habit insert here is where's the rest of the team, right? A fight breaks out, you want to go help. That's the trigger, right? Then the next habit is numbers. Is this worth going to, right? Is there anything else I should be doing if it's not worth going to, right? Uh, so yeah, very important to insert whatever your new habit is on top of your already old habits, which are your, your, your triggers. Okay. So yeah, um, let me know if I should make any other type of content. This is just the low hanging fruit, although it's funny cause it's the longest recording low hanging fruit I've fucking done. Uh, I'm going to go read manga now until 5am and pass out and, uh, start streaming late again, but Hey, I deserved it this time. Right? So <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. If you want to see more or uh, watch me stream, I stream on twitch.tv slash Saber. Send me your Twitch Prime because uh, I'm I'm not poor, but uh, I would like more money, I guess. Uh, uh, nice outro. All right, see you guys next time.